Not bad. It's been a long time since I've been in Grandma. Don't even go there. We're headed to a shop today. We've got a couple of ball joints we need to look after on this car. We'll meet you out there. Hey guys and welcome back to Old Car Guy. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Jason. And today we're actually going to be working on Grandma. Grandma! No, not my grandmother. Grandma. This is my 2004 Mercury Grand Marquis and my wife's daily driver. Today we're actually going to be replacing both lower ball joints. And I've actually got a little bit of a confession to make. I have a confession to make. I fought it. You see... I pretty much did this whole side, explained everything out to you. There was lots of great humor in there. I even challenged myself a couple of times, but all that was lost due to the fact that I forgot to turn the receiver portion of the wireless microphone on. Bang. Yep, it's on now. So the good news to that is that I wore out both batteries in both cameras to do this side. And I had to go home to get my other two batteries, two charge batteries. Not to mention the fact that I only got the one side done so I can go over and do the other side and explain everything to you guys all over again with as much detail. And now that I've done this side, I've actually got a pretty good idea of how to, t how to do it uh, in a timely fashion. So. Uh, I had to replace the sway bar link as well on that side, so I got two new ones. Uh, we're going to put this back together. I'm going to jump over to the other, other side and show you guys the disassembly over there. Um, and hopefully the sound is working. So let's, uh, I'm going to finish up this. You guys aren't going to see that, but I'll jump over to the other side and come back to you when we're ready to uh, tear things apart again. Okay, so we've got the other side put together. Now it's time to do the instructional video on how to, now that I know how to. <coughs> We're gonna get this wheel off here and uh, we'll show you all the steps needed to get the uh, ball joint replaced on a Crown Victoria or Grand Marquis or town, Lincoln Town Car. And of course, that wheel was supposed to just pop off there. Okay, so based on what I found from the other side, I found it very easy to simply take all the brakes off the caliper, the caliper bracket, and pop this rotor off. By taking the rotor off, that allows us to get to the 15 millimeter bolt that's up in here that you can kind of see there a little bit. So we'll get that out of the way. We're going to replace it anyway. And then that also gives us better access to the 21 millimeter uh, nut here and then we're going to rip this 21 millimeter nut off there. Everything goes to plan. We should just be able to take this um, whole spindle assembly, pull it down, let it dangle, and replace the ball joint, and then reverse the process of putting it back together. That's the plan anyway. So let's uh, 
get to getting those brakes off. All right, so now we're gonna take this uh, 15, I believe it is, 15 millimeter bolt off the, or not off the uh, sway bar. And it's the same thing on the back side. If we're lucky, we might be able to get a gun on there on, on the top for sure, but on the back side, not likely. But anyways, let's get that one off. Spin right out of there. Come on. I don't think I have a deep socket 15. Look at that. So there's part of it. I gotta get that bottom one. And probably gonna wrench it. Oh yeah. So if we could just keep that whole thing from spinning until it hits the rusty threads. Dang it! Sorry, right. we'll just use the old vice grips here. Get in there. Now that one there was actually pretty good. That bottom joint is still quite stiff. But stiff back or stiff knees, you stand straight ahead. This one here got a little bit of motion in it. Not loose and they weren't making any noise, but we're in here, we're taking it apart, and they're only about $18 a piece for new ones, so might as well replace them. So now that we've got that out of the way, we can uh, work on these 21 millimeters that hold the upper and lower ball joint in place. And with any luck, it should, uh, should slide right out of there. Slide to the right, slide to the left. Yeah, it's not 15 sixteenths, that's 21. That one's gonna need the long extension. For those of you watching from the US and don't know what the word extension is in French, you just learned something. Little bit of persistence on that one, she came out. All right. And down bottom, we're gonna have to pry on it, likely, to uh, get it to come out of there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We just wrench on her. Not with that. With our 13 sixteenths. Whoop, there goes the top one. Which means <laughs> yeah. pretty fart smeller. Which means I'm gonna put that nut on there to hold that spindle from dropping when I loosen the lower. It doesn't land on me toes. Uh, 13 sixteenths. So one thing you'll want to note is that on this lower ball joint, there is this little conical shaped 
um, spacer or whatever you want to call it that goes up in there. When you buy your new ball joint, it likely isn't going to come with that, so make sure you don't lose it because it'll have to go back up in there with the new one. All right, so before we get this uh, drop down out of its place, I found on the other side, if I popped off the uh, ABS sensors off the upper control arm, it allowed me to hang the whole spindle assembly down without wrenching too hard on that, or at all, on that ABS sensor so it didn't break. Keep in mind, the tie rod is what's actually going to hold it, but um, it will pull on that uh, ABS sensor if you're not careful. And just like that, the whole thing is basically out in your lap. So, just like the other side, we've got to get that snap ring off there, and we were actually able to uh, pound that out with a hammer, and then we ended up pressing in the new one. So. Let's clean up that uh, corrosion around there first. So any of you young fellows out there, or if you're in the automotive industry and, or whatever, and you're thinking about going into college to become an engineer to learn how to build cars and all that stuff, and you want to continue to use aluminum, go ahead. Use aluminum, but don't mix it with other metals. Because guys like us, when it comes time to fix on them, We have a few choice words for you. Little crybaby. Jeez, what a little crybaby. You gonna cry all day, crybaby? All right, so, snap ring pliers. Now the other side popped right out like nothing. This one, hopefully, same thing. Now for a car that spent its whole life in Southern New Brunswick, um, which is on the, Bay of Fundy, which is basically the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, we get lots of freeze-thaw cycles around here and things get rusty really, really quick. 2004, it's, it's a 16-year-old car. That snap ring came right out of there like it was nothing. I don't know for sure if those are the original ball joints or not, uh, but there is lots of corrosion built in around where the ball joint goes through the control arm. Nevertheless, that almost never happens. Now, how much bounce we got on that. I'm gonna put some penetrating fluid on there. Now let that soak up for a bit and uh, I'm gonna go grab a nice cold drink and I'll be right back with you. So one of the things that I wanted to do with uh, a lot of these videos and you've seen them going is that when I say something and there's something funny associated with it, um, I'll pop it up here in the screen somewhere so that you guys can get a little bit of a laugh. And there's, there's extra effort that goes into editing and putting those things in there, which is one of the reasons why I opted to go with just one upload a week, was to try my very best at making sure that the microphones were on. This one too. Yep. And giving you a little bit better production quality out of these videos. So um, to be fair, to be fair. 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 I did it before, and you guys liked it, and I stopped doing it because of the amount of work. So, uh, anyways, we're going to take a few whacks at that ball joint and see if she's going to come out on her own. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got to hit it first. Come on, Jason. Just like that. Just like that! Again, in, the, in these neck of the woods, nine times out of ten, um, that ends up fighting you. You have to get the ball joint pressed to press it out, uh, as well as press it back in. Anyways, I'm going to uh, clean up those edges a little bit where I may or may not have missed the ball joint, and we'll get the new one put in. We are going to spray some penetrating fluid in there, just some lubricant for that to go up in.
And we are using Moog Lifetime Warranty Parts on this car. And for those who want to know, the part number is K80141 for a lower ball joint on a Crown Vic Grand Marquis or Town Car. Now, one of the benefits of going with the lifetime warranty or the Moog is that you do have a grease fitting, so they are serviceable. Anytime you do an oil change or whatnot, you can uh, goop her up. Goop? What is goop? All right. Now, what I said in the past when I did the other side when I was recording and you guys weren't listening, is if you're lucky enough to have a three quarter inch drive inch and 13 16 socket it will fit right up over that boot hold itself in place on that ball joint and it's the perfect size another if you're lucky enough to have a ball joint press i mean i don't want to rub it in or anything but it's going to make this job 10 10 times easier uh, to put that in place than to kind of trying to, you know, use your hammer and beat on that up into place. Beating, what beating? Uh, yeah, you can do that, but I just find this way is a little more graceful, and uh, that's how I'm going to do it. The only trick with this is upper ball joint is in the way to get a gun on there, and uh, I'm not going to be able to kind of sit there because that's the way I would normally do it is with the air gun just kind of go zing zing pulls it into place and uh, take it apart but that ball joint is like right there to the point where I can't even push up on it any further so that is why we had our 7 8 was to sit here and uh, do it the old fashioned way. That's way more fun than using the air gun. Totally. It's funny because my dad always says, why do you use hand tools when you got a perfectly good air gun? You know, sometimes I just don't like having to hammer on things to get them done. Sometimes just grunting and groaning is the way to go. So now that that's in there, we can put on our uh, new snap ring and our grease fitting. And then we'll reverse the whole process when putting it all back together. So that's in place. We'll spin our our grease fitting in there. Once I find the threads. And that's a 10 millimeter. I had that somewhere. And on the other side, I took the uh, grease fitting and I had it face uh, the front of the vehicle because uh, it seems to be a little easier to get at uh, than the back with this sway bar link that's kind of right there in the way. So when you're done turning it, just make sure it's kind of pointing out the front a little bit. And now everything from here on out is just the reverse of what we just did, putting it back together. And for the record, from this point forward, um, we're only about nine minutes in on this, sec on this session of the uh, recording. And uh, I think we were seven or eight the first time so maybe a half hour all together if you got the right tools to put all this take it apart put it all together again and uh, anyways let's get that uh, all assembled again mm, yeah here we go
All right, and there you have it. Everything is back together. We just got to put the wheel back on and we've got to get the thing greased. So you take your ball joint lube pusher 2000 and you just start you just start giving her until you see the uh, rubber part of the ball joint start swelling up a little bit just like that and we're golden all right so I hope you learned something because I did today. This is the first time in all my 20 years I have ever, 20 years, yeah, we'll call it 20 years, 25 years uh, working on cars or better that I've ever done a lower ball joint on one of these Panther platform cars. So what I found on the other side, I don't know if I mentioned it before, was that uh, the hard way is to try and find an easy way to do it. You're just as far ahead to take everything apart that's in your way. Rotor, uh, the caliper, the bracket, the rotor, the sway bar link. And then you're just left basically with the tie rod, which you can leave attached, and your two ball joints. Get them out of the way, boom. You're right there where you need to be. And even, you don't need any special tools to get that far. I think we had the uh, a 15 and a 14 for the brakes and 15 for the sway bar link pop off that ABS line and uh, Bob's your uncle. It's Bob's your uncle. Pretty much a 21 millimeter for the ball joint since right in your hand. So uh, to this point, uh, it took a little bit of frustration on the other side, especially when we come to figure out that I was reviewing the video and we had no audio. So um, hopefully the audio is coming through good and loud and clear on this one. If you have ever changed a ball joint on one of these cars and it went easy, Go ahead and leave me your comments down in the comment section down below. Uh, or are you the type of person that simply just pays to have your work done? And uh, remember, when the guy comes out and gives you a bill for you know an hour and a half or two hours labor, whatever it takes, be appreciative uh, because with that ball joint tool, that is a specialty tool. If you don't have that, you're going to be fighting with it a lot longer. And uh, those, most of your mechanics nowadays, most of your shops have that tool like we do here. So anyways, I'm gonna put this tire back on and then I'm gonna show you the uh, upgrade that we got for this car that uh, is just gonna help set everything off. So we'll be right back. Dang it. So there you have it guys, that is the big reveal. I know, nothing really exciting to write home about. It's really exciting to see these new uh, center caps on Grandma that fit really well. Now we've got uh, the similar ones on Blackjack that we used on Grandma last year, but they wouldn't fit on these wheels. So I had to buy some and get them put on. And I think they look pretty cool. With all that being said, don't forget the Car Guy and Six Fan Show happens every Thursday at seven o'clock central, eight Eastern and it alternates every week between my channel and Grant Tommy, who is Straight Six Fan. I'll put his link right up there as well as in the first, as well as in the description box below. Um, it's a car show. Uh, a couple of car guys talking cars, and we have guests, we play games, we have a lot of fun. And if you're interested in uh, sitting in on some car chat, well, it might be just the place for you. So I hope you can uh, join us on Thursday evening this week. It'll be on Grant Tommy's channel. Go over there, subscribe to him so you can get notified every time we go live. That's it. That's all she wrote for this episode, guys. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. We will see you guys in the next upload on Friday.